In this video, we'll cover the application component of the topic, which is cyclotrons. Uh, this video in particular will cover the motion of charged particles in electric field. Here is the list of learning outcomes for the particular topic. Uh, you can pause the video and have a look through these. Uh, the intent is that you check them off once you know uh, the content that is covered. Sometimes charged particles need to be accelerated to high speeds in order to study their structure and components. Uh, this is particularly useful in fields such as nuclear physics and even in medicine. Sometimes when conducting research or using cyclotrons for medical purpose, uh, the particles are required to be accelerated to have energies in the order of giga electron volts. Now this is a quite a large energy and cyclotrons of very large size are required to do this. The largest cyclotron uh, in the world is in Canada called Triumph and it's 17.1 meters in diameter. One purpose of cyclotrons is to create isotopes for medical purposes. Now this is different to Large Hadron Colliders and other particle accelerators. That their main focus is uh, research. So the largest Large Hadron Collider is uh, approximately 27 kilometers long. Um, and this is a lot different in size to the 17.1 meter uh, circumference of the cyclotron. So a cyclotron is a device that is used to accelerate charged particles to high energies, um, meaning very high velocities, by utilizing the properties of electric fields and magnetic fields. I will now introduce some of the components of the cyclotron. So first up, uh, we have an ion source. Now originally this was a heated element uh, that produced electrons, and when the electrons went through the cyclotron, they actually collided with hydrogen. Um, and when this hydrogen had the collision with the electrons, uh, an electron from the hydrogen was released, uh, creating hydrogen ions. Now, in modern cyclotrons, uh, the source of ions is created by passing a gas through an electric arc. Uh, this is located outside of an evacuated chamber to maintain the integrity of the vacuum inside the apparatus. Uh, the diagram that I've got on this slide, you can see that the ions are injected into the apparatus centrally and then the performance of the cyclotron causes it to uh, spiral outwards in ever increasing velocities. The D's on the cyclotron are two hollow semicircular containers made from a non-magnetic material. Uh, they are open in the center at the diameter, so ions uh, that are accelerated through the uh, cyclotron can pass freely between the two D's. There is no electric field inside the Ds, as they are effectively hollow conductors. However, there is an electric field in the separation space between the Ds. So you can see on our diagram, uh, there's a thin line uh, where the Ds are separated, and that's where the electric field is. Inside the Ds is where the magnetic field is. Now the apparatus is located inside an evacuated container or a container that's got a vacuum in it, meaning uh, free of particles. So this is done uh, so that the particles that are moving around um, are not interfered uh, with by any particles that are in the air that may slow it down or add to its mass. So now I'll run through the operation of the cyclotron. So an alternating potential difference, um, an alternating voltage, is applied to the Ds. And the Ds in the diagram are the uh, green semicircles with a spe separation space between them. What the uh, alternating voltage does is produce an electric field in the region between the Ds. So that's the, sep the separation area. Um, it's alternating, so when the particle is, say, at the top of the Ds here, um, it accelerates maybe to the left, and when it's at the bottom, um, it accelerates to the right, so that's why it's alternating. Now, there's no electric field in the Ds, uh, because remember they're effectively hollow conductors, so the electric field is only in the separation space. Now, encompassing the whole thing is a magnetic field, which acts everywhere, uh, including uh, within the Ds, and this uh, actually focuses on changing the direction of the particle, and we'll look at that in another slide. So the particles originally start in the center of the cyclotron at the ion source. So you can see that on the diagram. Um, when the particles have a velocity, they enter the Ds. And remember now, they're only influenced by the magnetic field. 
and this changes their direction. So they're still traveling at the speed they were when they entered. Uh, when the particle exits the field, uh, it is between the separation space of the Ds, and in this region, it actually accelerates. So it has a greater speed than it uh, previously did in the other D. So as it enters the second D, uh, it enters at a greater speed, and this results in a greater radius. And you can see by the diagram, uh, this continues, and we end up with a spiral path. Uh, we can actually find the radius of the path of the particle, knowing uh, that the particle travels in a circular motion, meaning we can use the principles of uniform circular motion. Um, we also know the force due to the magnetic field on the particle. So that was from a previous uh, lecture as well. So we can use the equation, uh, we've got equation one, which is acceleration is velocity divided by radius. Uh, our second equation that we're going to use in this derivation is force equals mass times acceleration. And then the force due to the magnetic field is F equals um, the charge times the velocity times magnetic field and the angle that the particle is traveling through uh, in that field. However, in our case, our angle is 90 degrees, which means that the force on the particle is uh, related to the charge of the particle, the velocity of it, and the um, magnitude of the magnetic field. So what we're going to do is to use these equations to derive um, the radius of the path. So we can substitute F equals MA into F equals QVB and we get uh, mass times acceleration is equal to the charge on the particle, the velocity and the magnetic field strength. And then again, we can substitute uh, our knowledge of uniform circular motion. Um, we can substitute the acceleration there. Um, and what we get when we rearrange is our final answer, which is uh, the radius of the uh, path of the particle is equal to the mass of the particle the velocity times the velocity divided by the charge of the particle times the magnetic field strength.